Socks are something we put on without thinking. But consider this. The very first socks were strips of cloth or hide wrapped around the feet. Imagine walking around in those. Thankfully, that's ancient history. And today's socks are much better for the soul. With so many styles and fibers for socks these days, it's no problem putting your best foot forward. But you have to step into this room of knitting machines to truly understand what a science sock making has become. Here's a machine with the top open so we can get a view of the knitting action. An automated whirling cylinder pulls yarn from spools through holes in metal spokes. Little hooks on the needles grab the yarn. The hooks have latches. The latches open as the hooks snare the yarn and close as they knit so you don't lose a stitch. As you can see, this machine knits socks a lot faster than grandma, sometimes making over 360 pairs a day. As the layers are added, a sock emerges from a tube at the bottom. This knitting machine is fully computerized. It automatically switches to a different color of yarn to make a stripe or a company logo. Now the machine changes gears to make a heel. It does a half rotation instead of a whole one to knit the heel shape. The needles go up and down as the latches open and the needles pick up the yarn pulling it in. Knit one, purl two. Here it is in slow motion. This is about the speed at which a human could knit, but this machine normally runs at a speed of over 200 revolutions a minute. A tension mechanism moves back and forth, keeping the yarn from going slack and getting tangled. Now a sock shoots out of a vacuum tube, and a worker turns it inside out. She sews the toe closed and cuts off the extra fabric. Then she turns the sock right side out again, and it's sucked up by the vacuum. Next, the vacuum tube deposits the sock into a bin. The trapdoor on the end of the tube ensures that vacuum pressure isn't lost. But there's more than one way to close a sock toe, a more automated way. A worker slides the sock between two metal plates. Pressure holds them in place. Then a motorized conveyor system transports the sock to a sewing head. A blade cuts off excess fabric, and a needle goes up and down like an oil rig, stitching one row and then another as reinforcement. This automated system produces a finer seam than a sewing machine that's run manually. Now that the toe is closed, a robotic arm moves in and feeds the sock to a set of rollers. A blade pushes the sock down while the rollers turn the sock right side out. A vacuum chute fires the sock into a bin. Then it's on to the rotary dyeing machine. He loads 1,800 pairs or more depending on the size of the dyeing machine. The socks toss around in a bath of dyes, chemicals and softeners. For athletic socks, they add antimicrobial treatment to the mix. It will help prevent fungus or bacteria that cause foot odor. Now they slide the sock onto a foot form made of polished aluminum that won't cause snags. The aluminum leg forms stretch the socks to the prescribed size as they travel down a conveyor belt into a boarding machine. The boarding machine is like a gigantic iron, and the heat seals the stretch in the nylon so the sock stays that size. Once out, a robotic arm grips the sock and pulls it off the aluminum form. It's called a stripper. Then, an automated rack with protruding pins collects the socks. The worker removes them a bunch at a time, and the socks are ready for packaging. And then, all you have to do is pull up your socks. <laughs>